Okay, so first thing is you're going to take your bag and cut it so that it's 21 inches top to bottom. Okay, everything that I'm going to measure is pretty much going to be 21 inches here. So once you cut it and try to center the picture that you want in there, you're going to turn it inside out. So this is one I just turned inside out a couple minutes ago. If it's just dusty, just wipe it off. If it is greasy or stinks like cat food bags, you're going to need to wash it with soap and water and let it totally air dry before you make your bag. I line my bags, so the next thing I'm going to do is cut my liner to fit this bag. So, I'm going to have some over here. I reuse everything, and this is a sheet, a cast off sheet that nobody liked because it's this funky polyester stuff. So, what I do is I just rip my sheets into 21 inch long strips. I'm going to cut this elastic part off because I don't want it scrunching up like that. And then we're going to, um, so this is going to be our lining fabric. What I do, this is not scientific but it works, I give myself a seam allowance uh, between half an inch and an inch, not exact. Then I see where the end of the bag is, make a fold right there, and fold this so then I know about where to cut this side. Make a little snip and tear it. Oh, come on, you're going to do it. Okay. So, now I have my lining fabric. Right here. So, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and sew these two edges together. The two raw edges together. So, that's just a regular straight stitch, whatever seam allowance you had. So, I'm going to go do that. Okay, so now we have our lining, and you can see there is a seam going across here. Funky thread. So what you're going to do is turn this right side out. So your seam allowance is inside. Okay, doesn't matter. You don't have to try to put this on the edge or anything. Actually, I usually don't. Makes it easier. Fold your right inside out bag and stick it inside of here. And then flatten it all out. And try to even it up so that your bottom edge is along the same edge as the edge of the lining. So you can see it fits. If you made your lining a little too small, doesn't matter just while you're sewing, your plastic's going to be a little crinkly. If you made your lining too big, doesn't matter, just make a little pleat in it when you sew. So, double check and make sure you got it going the right direction. I use clips, you can use pins, you can use clothes pins. I put some of these clips going across the bottom just because they are fast. You can see it looks a little short, that's okay. And now what I'm going to do is one straight stitch seam, somewhere between half inch and an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to run a zigzag along the edge. It's going to take the edge of the fabric for the liner and the edge of the bag in there so nothing will unravel. Okay, so I've got the seam sewed and I've got the zigzag on the edge. Just ignore this mess down here. I forgot I had a really fine needle in there and I had to take it out. I ran a, a 14, it runs great on this. A little heavier, a little lighter is fine, but I had a 9 so that didn't work. So 
Now what I'm going to do is fold the hem for the top. Ooh, cabbage. So what I do is uh, one inch at a time. So I get about an inch. I'm folding the lining at the same time, and then I fold it again. So you end up with twice the amount. And this is where these little clips come in handy. And I do the other side. Now, if you have a free arm machine, you can turn it right side out first and do this. Since my machine does not have a free arm, it's easier for me to sew it this way, so that's what I do. So now I have these two clipped. I'm going to pull it straight and then clip the sides. Tuck the lining in there. Turn it over twice. together it's a lot stiffer in that spot I always make sure I put a clip on there so now what I'm gonna do is using a straight stitch and if this isn't perfectly straight it's okay no one's gonna care just run a seam about a quarter inch from the edge all the way around okay I'm gonna go do that okay so now we have this with one straight stitch going around it and we're ready to put our straps on. I buy this lightweight webbing on a big roll of like 50 yards per roll just because I make a whole bunch of these. But you can use things you've cut off of old bags, you can make fabric straps, you can do whatever you want to. Um, but this is what I use, and again, the key number is 21. So these are 21 inches long, and I cut two of them. The way that I know how to place them is I measure my bag. This one is uh, 19 and a half inches. So when I find the middle of that, which will be uh, nine and three quarters. Okay, so from nine and three quarters, I'm gonna measure three inches on each side, take a little Sharpie and mark it. So I put my little center point here, measure three inches, and I put a cross or a little X at the three point because I found that a plain line sometimes blends in with the uh, pattern. So, and then I just figure out where it was here and I duplicate it on the other side. Match it, put it across there. So I have two marks on this side and two marks on this side. I sew the straps on the plastic side. That's because they help hold the bag in. If you sew it on the inside of the bag, um, they take more of the brunt and it's not as strong for hauling really heavy things. So I'm going to go sew the straps on and then I'll show you the stitches I use. So what I have is the um, straps, actually I should have put the X on this side, didn't mean to confuse it. Um, but the strap, the way I sew it, it's like an exaggerated zigzag. I do a little back stitch where I start, do a zigzag back stitch at the end. That holds it really secure, so even if one little thread comes off, the rest of them are, are going to hold it. And I forgot to show that if you get webbing and you just cut it to seal the edges off to keep them from fraying, I keep a lighter and you just turn on the lighter and run it on the edge and that melts the little ends of those little hairy threads, melts them together and they're sealed so they don't fray. And now the bag is done. So I reach in and turn it right side out. 
and where the natural folds are on the bag, I usually try to keep those. This makes it fold nice and flat. So same with this side. Just make sure that those where the folds were before is where I have my bag ending. And it's all done. A nifty little tote bag holds a lot of weight. I've had 50 pounds of weight in these. Big strip bag, sack, it's a nicely lined. All set. So I hope that answers your questions. Let me know if you need anything else. Bye-bye.